Hello everyone, I am Michaela from Cinematic Stitches and welcome to my channel. If you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. And if you are new here, I hope you like it. <laughs> I uh, have changed things up a bit. I decided to go with, I don't know if it's more interesting, but it's certainly busier. A bookshelf background, why not? There's some changes here, uh, hopefully for the better. <laughs> I also changed my hair. We're, we're going pink now and we've got a lot shorter. I used to have my hair this short before the pandemic for like years because I'm fairly low maintenance with hair. She says with the dyed <laughs> business going on. Uh, no, I just don't like to spend a lot of time on my hair in the morning. So anything longer than this is very annoying for me. Uh, when the pandemic happened, I kind of tried out a few longer for me styles, but no, I decided it's time to go back. Time to go back to the shave. Love it. Anyway, we're feeling good. Uh, this is not a channel about hair, <laughs> first and foremost. This is a channel about cross stitch. And we got a lot to cover today. I want to do a little bit of a finish parade I want to go through my whips, we'll talk about plans, and I've got a lot of haul. I don't normally have a lot of haul. I don't buy a lot of stuff consistently for this hobby, but I was in Portland this weekend. And when we're in Portland, we must visit Acorns and Threads, of course. So I went there and I bought a lot of stuff. <laughs> bought a lot of patterns and uh, three pieces of fabric that I'll show you. I got almost everything I wanted um, from my Nashville checklist and a few other things. So I will get to that. Uh, but before we begin, I wanna start with a couple thank yous. First off, huge thank you to everyone who has subscribed to me and watched my first video. I was thinking that it would be really fun if I could get like maybe a hundred people to watch the video. Uh, and as of right now, I think there's like seven, over 700 of you who've watched it. So like, wow, thank you. That's cool. Uh, I've got over a hundred subscribers now too. Cool, I guess. Thanks for taking a chance on me guys. Um, and uh, a really huge thank you to Cam the Stitcher. She mentioned me in her most recent video um, and recommended people check me out. That really means a lot. Like, thank you so much. Um, I'm so happy you enjoyed my first video and hopefully you will enjoy the rest that is to come. But um, like, seriously, thank you so much for the shout out. I really appreciate that. And Marjorie Maid as well um, mentioned me in uh, the description of one of her videos a few weeks back. So that that's seriously like so appreciated. Thank you so much. I follow them both on Instagram. I've been watching them since I started on FlossTube and like, I don't know, just, it's cool. It means a lot, so thanks. Um, all right, well, now that that is sorted, let's get started with our finish parade. I thought it'd be kind of fun to show you some of my finish, some of my finishes. Well, yeah, I guess some of them. I did not take pictures of a commission I did, for instance, last fall and, I actually don't own two of the pieces I finished, but I'll be inserting a photo. Um, yeah, I started stitching, I believe it was in 2016. That's what I said in my first video. And now I'm like seriously questioning my memories. Like, did I start in 2015? But you know what? It doesn't really matter because here I am now still stitching. Does it matter when we started? Not really. Uh, right, so let's dive on in. My very first finish. None of my stuff is fully finished, by the way. I have several finishes, none are fully finished. I have a few on my Whipco board this year to be fully finished. And um, we'll just leave it at that. I, I like to work on things. I like to finish them. I don't like to display them apparently, which is like, come on, you spent so much time on it. You better display it. So that's gonna be one of the goals this year is to like get more fully finished objects going, you know? So what we have first off here is Mediterranean Flavors from Dimensions. This is a kit you can buy. I saw it at my local Michael's at the time. 
I still see it at Michael's. <laughs> it's really cute though. I quite like it. Uh, looking at the back, I'm slightly horrified. It's, it's not really as bad as it could be, but compared to what I'm doing today, this looks a bit wild to me. Whoa, those back stitches are going everywhere. But anyway, it's very cute. One day I hope to put it in my kitchen. You know, looks very Italian to me. I'm Italian. Embrace the heritage, am I right? All right, second up, I showed you this in my last video, but this is my first self-drafted pattern, second finish ever. It is kind of finished, but not really, as we can see here. Wow, what was I doing? Anyway, it's the McRib. <laughs> this is a McRib pattern. This is a quote from a Twitter character that my husband loves, and this was a gift for him uh, for his birthday in 2016. Next up, Poppy Pear from Dimensions. Look at that, aren't those some nice flowers there? Wow. There's supposed to be writing on this, but I really hated the writing, so I didn't do it. Just went with the flowers. This one I started most likely 2017, and I didn't finish it until the summer of 2020 uh, when I started stitching again. I was stitching in 2016, I think, like on and off, 2016, 2017, on and off. Didn't pick it up again until 2020 when the pandemic hit, and I just needed something to do to keep myself occupied. But we did this. This will hopefully be appearing again later this year. It's on my Whipco board to finish as a pillow. I've never made a pillow, uh, but we're gonna figure it out. I have a number of designs that I'm working on that I want to turn into pillows at some point, and I gotta start somewhere, right? So it might as well be on this little dimensions kit. It's an easy low stakes thing to complete. And it'll be fun to learn how to use my sewing machine. I got one for my wedding. I would love to learn how to sew. I don't know how to do it, <laughs> but we're gonna figure it out. Like a goal of mine would be to learn how to create a project bag because I love project bags. And to be able to have the power to create my own. That's where I wanna be. Okie dokie, moving along. Uh, the next project I finished is, sorry, I'm whacking the table and my camera's shaking. The next project I finished was a gift for my mom. I somehow stitched this over the course of a month, which is crazy for me because I'm, I'm pretty slow, but I did this in 2020 uh, when I was feeling like peak pandemic crazy and I wasn't really sleeping very much. So I believe I started it like probably around Remembrance Day, November, um, which is November 11th. For those who, does everyone do Remembrance Day? I think it's Veterans Day in the States. Surely most, most, I don't know. That's a big assumption. Some countries do Remem Remembrance Day, I assume. There's some version of it. But I started it around there and I finished it just before Christmas and then had enough time to like fully finish it into a framed piece for my mom. That was the first item I ever like laced and um, finished fully in a frame. So that was a pretty cool to do. Uh, yeah, I just remember staying up really late every night, like stitching my ass off basically to try and finish this thing. I was watching a lot of Gilmore Girls at the time. That's what I remember. That was what I was binging at the time. I never watched Gilmore Girls at the time it was on. It was not really my vibe. I think I was watching Buffy then more than anything. Are they, were they even on at the same time? I don't know. Anyway, I've watched it now. I can't say I love it, but I did watch the whole thing. I kind of think Lorelai and Rory are terrible people, but I love Emily because she's awful and she knows it. And that I can get behind. She kind of uses her nasty powers for, not for good, but in an amusing way that I'm here for. That's my hot take on Gilmore Girls. Anyway, uh, so after I had finished that, I, I was actually attempting to finish two projects for Christmas of 2020. There was um, 
did I even say what it was called? Holy hell. The project I worked on for my mom was called Ball with a Red Cardinal by Svetlana Sikar? Sikar, I think I'm gonna put it in the comments or uh, the description, I don't know for sure. My mom loves cardinals, they're all over the house, especially during the holidays. <laughs> I feel like every time I go over there, there's another one that's just popped up. So I decided why not add to her collection? So I stitched that, I fully framed it, it looks super cute. You can see that here. The next project I worked on, I was also attempting to finish for December 2020, but I failed miserably because I severely underestimated how long it would take. It was my first and only full coverage piece. It was Welcome to Winterfell from Country Magic Stitch. This thing took some time and it really, it act, honestly, it burned me out. <laughs> I worked on it like nonstop from probably around like August 2020 to November before I had to switch over to my mom's piece. I had planned to give it to my sister for a Christmas present, December 2020. That did not work out. She got it December 2021, <laughs> but I did manage to finish it. Um, I will say the color blocks drove me wild. It's just too much. It was too much the sky. And then I miscounted and accidentally put in like five extra rows. <laughs> Disaster. I was already so sick of the blue. And then there was so much more of it. Uh, anyway, the whole thing was a bit of a nightmare, but <laughs> I finished it. Uh, it's not the most... I, I see lines. There are lines on it. I don't think you can tell in the picture. Maybe you can. Oh. But um, I didn't quite know how to stitch it in a way where... It didn't look like, you know when you stitch a bunch of blocks and you go all the way down and then you stitch another bunch of blocks and you go all the way down? I did not like meet my stitches very well. So there's like a very obvious line where that happened. The perfectionist in me felt very sad when I saw that, but there's only so much you can do. It improved a bit with like washing and ironing, but it's fine. It was cute. It's done. It's now in my sister's hands. <laughs> I don't know if it's hanging. I hope it is. It's framed. <laughs> She's moving soon, so it's probably actually not hanging at the moment, but anyway, I finished that. Uh, and then my next finish wasn't for quite some time. I, it's the Cryptid Sal. I started that Sal when it started, which I think was in August, 2020. And I didn't finish it until last June, June, 2022. And it's lovely. I love it so much. I stitched it on the call for 30 count Old Salem from the Primitive Hair. Um, this is a pattern from the Witchy Stitcher. And oh look, and I added Sasquatch. There was a choice of like three, three cryptids to end it. I picked little, little Mr. Bigfoot there. Being from the Pacific Northwest, I had to go for it, right? Um, and this is, this is actually quite funny for me. So this is a finish. I thought it was finished. Um, in one of her recent videos, Cam the Stitcher was talking about this. She said, oh wow, I, uh, you know, basically to the effect, I didn't realize that the skulls had teeth because there's these cute little skulls here. And you can see they have little teeth. And I guess she didn't notice and they were like a bunch of blobs. And I was gonna come on here and say, the same thing happened to me. I didn't notice they had teeth either. When I was working on the cryptid cell, I got like halfway through and noticed another skull. I think it was in the chupacabra section that I'm like, hey, wait, that skull's supposed to have teeth. Oh my God, none of them have teeth. So I had to go back in and fix them all. And I thought I caught them all, but I just picked this up again today. I did not, I did not catch all of them. So Cam, you're not the only one who totally missed the teeth. I just flung that on the floor. That's fine. That's how I'm feeling about it. Uh, so once this video is done, I will be putting the teeth in. So that is a proper finish. Right. So after that, I wanted to get some smalls done and out of the way. I had bought a few of the uh, seasonal kind of like holiday pieces that the witchy stitcher had done. 
And I finished those. Oh, goodness. I did Samhain. How cute is that? It's so cute. I stitched it on 28 count eek from Picture This Plus. It's Lugana, I think, which I actually quite enjoyed stitching on. But uh, yeah, this was like a travel piece for me. I worked on it in the car on the way to a family reunion in August. And then when I went to LA in September, I was working on that as well. And I think I finished it close to uh, Thanksgiving weekend in October. In Canada, Thanksgiving is in October, if you didn't know. But anyway, that's when I finished it. And it's so cute. I also worked on Yule, which I started, I think I started it December 1st and finished it on, on the winter solstice, which is what, the 21st of December? I'm gonna say that's what it is. I think that's it. This is just on like, um, I think it's just like raw linen actually. Another design from the Witchy Stitcher. Absolutely love it. It's so cute. Wow, it's backwards, Michaela. Wow. Okay, there you go. That's <laughs> that's how good my stitching is, guys. I can't tell front from back. Um, it actually isn't that bad. I realize I'm doing this on a camera, so it's flipped. So to me, that looked the correct way. But to you, it's going to look backwards, won't it? Anyway, there's the proper direction. Y'all, it's so cute. You will be seeing these again later this year. They are also on my WhipGo board uh, as items to fully finish. I wanna turn them into flat folds. I'm trying to learn how, how to do different finishing techniques. So I've got the pillow, I've got the flat folds. I already know how to lace and frame things. So yeah, add more things to my repertoire, as it were. <laughs> And last but not least, we have this last stitched piece here. It's my most recent finish. I finished it January 1st of this year, 2023. And that is the Supernatural Stitch Along, also on Old Salem. I love this. I can't wait to get these framed. They're so beautiful. So this one I remembered to do the skulls correctly. Anyway, um, I think they're lovely. It's gonna be nice to get them finished, which I swear to God I will do at some point. Like, what's the point of stitching something if you're just gonna like keep it in a box somewhere, which is what I've been doing. Those are my finishes. Next up, whips. So I worked on one, two, three, four, five. I worked on five things since we last spoke three weeks ago. I don't know if I took any pictures of where I was before, so we're just gonna have to use our imaginations. I have, well, I won't really call it a finish because it's not finished, but I'm almost finished the first block, oh my goodness, of uh, Halloween at Hawk Run Hollow. So when last we spoke, the graves were not here, a lot of the grass was missing, my little snaky friend here was not there. Mr. Bones wasn't either. So all that's been added in. I finished this um, March 31st. I still have to add all the back stitching and the French knots, but that's okay. I'm not going to do it until I do a little of block two. I don't know why. For me, like there's this mental block. I think I'm somehow gonna mess up the stitches with my hoop. I probably wouldn't, but I just don't want to deal with like thinking about messing up the back stitch so it's going to stay how it is until we're part way through the second part way through the second block which I will need to do by the end of the year anyway because the first half of the second block was actually a whip go pull for last month for March and I clearly have not done that I took the time to actually uh, finish the, the full crosses on the first block so I, I worked on it. I didn't do the exact goal, but I, I got closer. So anyway, I love this. Love, 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 love this. It's so, it's so beautiful. It really is. Um, oh yeah, I'm stitching this on a 32 count. It's going to be real big when it's done. Um, 32 count light mocha. You're going to hear, I'm sorry, my husband is playing Resident Evil. You're going to hear the um, PlayStation screaming. 
<laughs> He's laughing about it, but it's fine. It's okay. This is what I get for filming too late. You know, I tried to film this before. I tried to film it on my computer and I, I don't have a ring light. I'm using natural light. And as it was going down, the noise <laughs> of what was like, the noise as in like video, uh, what do you call that distortion? The picture distortion was just so distracting. I'm like, I can't have this. So we're, we're switching to the phone. We're recording a little later. And because of that, you're gonna listen to that. <laughs> but I'll keep moving. So the next thing I worked on was data portraits in Paris 1900 from Shaded Stitchery, which I adore. My goal is to finish this this month. I think the last time I showed you this, like this stuff wasn't here. I think I'd finished up to this, but, uh, oh, that was there for sure. But this stuff wasn't, and neither were these lines. I still have this section to fill in, and then there's some lines along here that I need to do. But it's getting there, it's almost done. That's on a 28 count fog from Picture This Plus, I believe, yeah. Anyway, I love this stitch. It's so beautiful. And it's really cool, like shaded stitchery included all the graphs that these little sections were based on. So on my Instagram, which I'll link below, I've been posting each section as I finished it along with the accompanying graph that had a written, like that um, the pattern is based on. So you can see it all together. Um, and I thought that was really cool. Anyway, I love that project. Having a good time on it. I'm hoping to finish it by the end of April. Oh, Kerr, next up. Oh yes, ha <laughs> ha. There's always room from Maximum Cross Stitch. I only worked on this for one day, but I did finish the little acorn things. I can't tell if they're flowers or acorns. They kind of look like they're acorns, you know? Just the, um, the shape. And the color well it's not really acorn like but i guess it could be like buds flower buds who knows anyway i'm loving stitching this it's on a 36 count porcelain linen from uh ever totes and yeah it's a lovely stitch i really haven't put a lot of time into it as you can see it's really just part of the border not even the full thing but I'm having a blast. I'm hoping to work on it at least one or two days this month. We'll see how that goes. Uh, next up, we have Dark Queen of the Earth from Autumn, Autumn Lane Stitchery. I took her out of the Q-Snap. She's wrinkled as hell. I did not iron her, but that's fine. Look how tall she is. I haven't seen her like, I haven't seen her out of the Q-Snap in some time. So um, if you don't mind, I'm just gonna wear her as a hat for a second here. I think this is the optimal way of showing cross stitch I've heard. Anyway, uh, up close, we can see, I didn't, I didn't work on her too many days, but you can see I've added some of like the darker yellows in here. Just mostly the bottom of her dress. I am, this is still part three, like all of this is part three. It's so much stitching. I'm going to work on technically part five next over here. I can't, I don't think I can stomach part four right now. It's technically bigger. It's, it's bigger than part five, not by much, but it's bigger. And I, I just, I can't do another massive, <laughs> massive section. It's driving me nuts so much. Like I love working on it, but it's just taking me forever. I'll finish it at some point this decade. Um, oh yes. And I am stitching this on the 32 count gilded oak from under the sea fabrics, which is one of the two fabrics that you can choose or well you can do whatever you want but it was one of the, the two official fabrics for the queen okay finally last but not least we've got the chopping mall love the chopping mall so in my last video i had done um captain spaulding and reagan there reagan's on that little no she's not on the pony she's beside the pony these this section oh boy there i'll fold it that's easier all right there we go i got it 
Um, okay, so that's where I was last time. Now I have moved on over here. I've done the outline of the room and I've started, so this is Ghostface from Scream and there's also gonna be it's this area called Sawyer Stitching that has, I guess his name is Sawyer? I honestly did not pay attention enough to the movie apparently to know that this guy had a name, but it's the uh, Chainsaw Killer from Texas Chainsaw Massacre. He's got his own little room right there where he's gonna be making flesh suits. <laughs> quite grim, but amusing for me, the horror fan. Uh, if you have children, I don't know how you're going to explain that to them and if, if they happen to be watching this video for some reason. But anyway, good luck with that. Uh, <laughs> so I have to, he's going to be here, his chainsaw is going to be dangling here, it's going to be dripping blood, and then there's going to be uh, some flesh on the work table there. Uh, this was a whip go pull this month. I have to do two rooms that both my pulls were for like one room at the chopping mall. So this is one whole room, this whole thing. So I'm hoping to finish that. Sorry, I keep bumping the camera. I'm hoping to finish that um, hopefully by the end of this week and then I can start room two, which I believe is Jason Voorhees, Friday the 13th. He works security at the chopping mall. Don't know how secure I'd feel with that guy around, but <laughs> whatever. It's so cute. I can't wait to be done this. My goal is to finish the whole thing by the end of the year. I don't know if that's going to happen because the, um, the roof is what I'm trying to say. The roof of the chopping mall is like quite a bit of stitching. So we'll see how it goes. Right. So those are the whips. Plans. Let's, let's talk plans. I've kind of covered them already. I'm going to be, I'm planning on finishing the two rooms of uh, the chopping mall. I'm also planning on finishing data portraits in Paris. And those are really my only goals for this month. I would also like to touch a couple other projects. I like to feel like I still have the ball rolling on some of my other whips. So I want to work hopefully one day each on the raccoon. There's always room and also the richest season. Um, I didn't show you the raccoon or the richest season, but if you watch my first video there in my whip parade, the raccoon, I it was like a spring 2023 start. I've only worked on it one day. There's barely anything there. So I want to keep that going. And um, yeah, the uh, richest season from Twin Peak Primitives is a fall pattern. It's so gorgeous. I love it. I'm hoping to have it finished by this fall, but we'll see. I've really only been working on it like two days a month kind of thing. Previously, it was like my Sunday only project. And I've reduced that a little bit with all the other projects I have on the go. We'll see. I'll keep you posted. Um, all right. Done with plans. Let's talk about haul. I have so much I have so much stuff. I have so much stuff to show you. So like I said, I went to Portland. I got a big sack. I've got a big sack. Uh, sack of goodies, like Santa, right? So to start, I got some really cool fabrics. I got some counts I don't normally use. So I have, uh, I bought 136 count and 240 counts. Never stitched on 40 count. Figured I'd give it a shot. Oh God. I dropped something. It's fine. I have Sahara 36 count. It is a beautiful gold, like kind of a tarnished gold color. Lovely. I got, a, it doesn't say who did this, it just says Edinburgh linen. So I guess that's a type of linen. I don't think it's a manufacturer, unless I'm horribly wrong. Someone can correct me in the comments, I'm sure. <laughs> I also bought Be Stitch Me Winter Mix 40 count. Uh, sorry, it's dark in here. I swear I'll update my lighting situation eventually, but today is not the day and you're gonna have to deal with some subpar lighting. Sorry, friends. It's eh, 
picture, picture a cloudy sky. Like, not like gray, but like blue sky with wispy white clouds. That's, that's the vibe of winter mix. It's really pretty. I also got another 40 count. This is from, I've never heard of them, Atomic Ranch Linen. Cool. It, the color is called Phantasm, which sounded ooky spooky, so I had to get it. <laughs> it's like a, it's purple. It's got some greeny splotches. This is not doing it justice at all, but that's fine. I'll stitch something on it eventually, and then you'll probably see it in its full glory then, but it's, it's a nice color. You can take my word for it. I wanted to get some mm, colors like this because I am in a Fabric of the Month Club with Mystic, Mystic Fabrics? Yeah, with Mystic Fabrics, but she's doing neutrals this year. So I wanted to get something that was like a little more fun. Um, not that neutrals can't be fun, <laughs> but you know what I mean, just something more colorful. Okay, let's keep moving. My light is slowly dying. Apologies for the darkness, everybody. Oh my, I dropped, I dropped my beads. Hang on. My precious beads. Okay, we're gonna go through this. I bought a lot of patterns, everybody. <sighs> Brace yourself. Okay, so from heart and hand, I got a honey of a tiny town. <laughs> it's so cute. I really like this. I have a t uh, the Halloween Tiny Town, which I'm planning on starting this year in October. And uh, oh my gosh, there's beads here. I didn't even look inside, but there's beads. I won't show you inside, obviously, because that's where the pattern is. But anyway, beautiful. I love it. Like this whole thing is just so freaking cute. So. Like my, I'm like, my goal is to stitch every single pattern and turn it into a drum. I've never made a drum. I'm so slow. Realistic, like, Michaela, is that a realistic thing to say and think and do? No, but we can have unrealistic goals, I've decided. So, <laughs> but I am like resisting buying the other patterns because I want to finish at least one before I like go totally ham. But anyway, I had to get this one. It was just too cute. I couldn't pass it up. So yes, Honey of a Tiny Town. I also got from uh, Dirty Annie's Southern Style. Is it just Dirty Annie's? Dirty Annie's Southern Style. Maybe Southern Style is like the uh, description of her patterns. Anyway, from Dirty Annie. <laughs> Cat Cuss. Ooh. I love it. I mean, I love cats. Like I love animals in general. I'm a huge animal fan. My cat is sleeping up there right now. Husker. He's dead to the world. He's in a box, like way up above our bed, basically. But anyway, I love cats. It's a cat kiss. How cute is that? I wanted it. Uh, one of my goals too was actually to increase the number of small patterns in my stash. I have a lot of like medium to big size patterns and that that is part of the reason why I don't have, like I, I have a fair number of finishes I feel, but like I, I kind of want that like boost of finishing something a little more often, you know? So I figured up the stash of small patterns you have and perhaps we can make that dream a reality. <laughs> okay, so next up I got uh, five friends from Kesslin, Kesslin? I don't know. My sister spotted this on the wall and she's like, oh my God, look at that. You need that. And it's true, I needed it. So I bought it. How freaking cute. Oh my God. And I bought the matching bead pack. So we're all set on beads. And I think this is gonna look great on that eek fabric I have. The fabric this is on is clearly like, it's a little punchier, but I think it's gonna look great on, oh, it's also a picture of this plus. So this is stitched on prank apparently. But I think it's gonna look equally good on eek. That's what I say. But yeah, love it. Love those witchy shoes. They're all so cute. All right, let's move along here. I've got Rabbit Parade from the Blue Flower. Ooh, adorable. They all got their bunny ears. I got Cozy Christmas Cat. Again, another cat. This is not the only cat really. The, Obviously it's not the only cat related item, you just saw one. It's not the last cat related item is what I'm trying to say. So cute. 
Moving on to Plum Street samplers, I've got Christmas Mini Moon. Oh, so cute. I've got Corgi Caboodle. I love corgis. Uh, at one of my last jobs, last jobs, at the company I was at last, when we were in the office, we had an office corgi. His name was Watson and he was adorable. So I miss him and I wanna, I wanna stitch some corgis. Oh my God, there's a picture of a corgi on the back of this pattern. Oh, look how cute. Uh, his name's Gnocchi. I met a corgi named Gnocchi like two weeks ago. Is that a thing? Is that a common thing to name your corgi? Gnocchi? Maybe. Anyway, um, I bought two patterns from the Tea Time palette. I also purchased the silks from the Tea Time palette. I got um, Ingleside Imaginarium's Tea Time Companion, which just looks so cool. Love it, dragon on a teapot. Come on, how cool is that? I also got Sweet Tea Rex from Ardith Design, another absolutely adorable pattern. I really like dinosaurs. I loved dinosaurs as a kid, so went with that. Um, I also have my eye on, oh my god, what is it? It's just called Spill from Hemlock and Rye. Is that the name of her company? Julie from Kansas City Girl in a Colorado World. She designed a really cute one. It's a teacup that just says Spill on it. I want to get that as well to use for that palette. I actually, like, does anyone know how many of, like, these themed patterns you're going to be able to get out of this much silk? I have no idea. I mean, I suppose it totally depends on the type of fabric you're stitching on, but I'd love to get at least a few projects out of these. We'll see. All right, another one from Art of Design. This was just, like, so silly. I had to get it. Uh, it's the Spaghetti Western Sampler. I love to eat. Westerns are, Westerns are a vibe. <laughs> it's so cute. I really, really love it. Like, look, there's a friggin' barrel of spaghetti in this thing. I just can't. So anyway, I got that. I'm loving it. I'm gonna stitch it. It's gonna be great. Okay, then I got a bunch of stuff from Lindy Stitches. I love her stuff. I love birds. I love animals. I'm here for it. I got Armchair Ornithologist. I wanted to be an ornithologist as a child and a marine biologist. The air and the sea were the places for me. Um, I've always liked birds. So anyway, this spoke to me. So cute. I also got Strut and Tom because I love turkeys. I don't eat them. I, I just like them as a concept. <laughs> anyway, I got Mistletoe Loitering Society as well, because how could I not? Look at that raccoon on that table. My friend Danielle would absolutely love this. She's obsessed with raccoons. Ugh, it's so cute. <laughs> and then you got that penguin? The penguin with the hat? Ah! Adorable. Okay, this was in the 50% off pile and I had to do it. Jacko Juggle Spell from the, Victor uh, the Victoria Sampler, designed by Kathy Jean. I don't, I've never heard of either of those companies, but look at her. She is so nursty and I love her. Her warts are, uh, <laughs> her warts and her nails actually are uh, beads. I got the bead pack. Look at that, they come with pumpkins. Pumpkin beads. It's so cute. Anyway, I had to get it. So I did. And this is the last, I also got a pattern book that I'll show you, but this is the last pattern I got. The Cat Tapestry. Love it. From uh, Tiny, Mo Tiny Modernist, pardon me. Oh, those kitty cats, they're so sweet. Mm. Love kitties. I might recolor mine one to look like my cat. My cat's a flame point Siamese, so he's like creamsicle colored. I guess is like the best way to put it. I don't know. Anyway, um, and finally I got the Ultimate Sampler Motifs Source Book from Brenda Keys. 
I've wanted this for a while because I kind of like the idea of like maybe one day doing my own sampler. And this just has so many alphabets and just amazing motifs. And I saw it on the shelf, so I had to get it. Uh, anyway, got that. So beautiful. Yeah, that's the haul. I got a few other things like Q-snaps and stuff. Anyway, that is it for haul. So that's all the stitching stuff. Um, thank you so much for joining me. If you enjoyed what you saw today, please subscribe, uh, like the video, comment below. If you've seen any of these patterns, seen any of the patterns, surely you've seen them. If you, if you have any of these patterns, you're working on them too. Um, I have plans for some of these. Yeah, like I said, I, I, I got most of what I was looking for at Acorns and Threads. The only one I really wanted that they didn't have was the Birdman Cometh because that is such a weird looking piece. And like I said, I love birds. <laughs> um, and I actually have the perfect fabric for it. It's this really nice red fabric, but alas, they did not have it. So I did get a gift card for one, two, three stitch. So I might just have to order it through there, but yeah. I got all my patterns. Um, but yeah, anyway, if you've enjoyed what you've seen, you want to see more of me, I don't know, like, subscribe, do all those things. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram too. I will put the link to that in the description. The name is very similar to this one. It's just cinematic. Uh, the E is a three. You know, I want to make it hard for people to find me apparently. <laughs> Uh, the Instagram is a personal account though, so you are going to see cross stitch, but you're also going to be seeing other stuff that I post. I don't know if I'm going to bother making a cross stitch specific Instagram. I manage social media channels as part of my job and like, do I want another one to manage? No, I don't. So I'm just going to stick with that. <laughs> At least that's my, what I've decided for now. Um, okay. Yeah. So like I said, that's all the stitching stuff. Uh, if you want to stick around and listen to, listen to what I've been reading, watching, and playing, you can hang around for a few more minutes. I won't ramble on too long because I see this is like a longer video already, <laughs> so we'll see how this goes. Um, but okay, so let's talk about reading. I finished two books in the past three weeks. The first one was Giovanni's Room by James Baldwin. Uh, this has been a book I've had my eye on for some time. I finally just got on the waiting list for it at the library and read it on my Libby app, which if you don't have that Libby app, well, let me tell you, it's the best way to read ebooks. I love it. Uh, anyway, the book is really beautiful. Um, it is about two men in Paris. You find out that one of them has been sentenced to death and his former lover is remembering basically their time together and it kind of goes into his life and I don't know if he necessarily sees them as failures but really the book overall is about love and like loving oneself and what happens when you're unable to like accept a part of yourself um the uh, the, the narrator of Giovanni's room is I don't know safe to say he's closeted, I guess. Like he doesn't want to admit openly that he's, he loves men. He has a fiance. That doesn't necessarily work out. Um, but yeah, it's basically about this kind of tort affair he has with Giovanni and how basically his inability to accept himself and fully accept Giovanni kind of leads to both their downfalls. That's how I'm going to put it. <laughs> That's what I took away from it. It's, it's, um, I mean, it's a famous book. Uh, James Baldwin is a prolific writer and it was absolutely gorgeous. It's heartbreaking, but it's so beautiful. I highly recommend it. It's not a very long read. Um, I think I read it in about a week and a bit. Yeah, it's just under 200 pages, I think. Is that correct? give or take. It's around there. It's a shorter novel, but definitely worth it. Check it out. I also read uh, Transgender History from Susan Stryker, 
And this was something I put on my hold list at the beginning of the year as part of uh, Stitch for Pride. A transgender History is a really informative read. I would say it, it's definitely something you should read considering the attack on trans rights going on right now. It gives some historical context into the trans rights movement. Um, it's a fairly like narrow view in the sense that it only looks at North American history post World War II. So obviously trans people have already, always existed um, and just not and not just in the way that the West understands, you know? So this book covers specifically like North American movements, what's happened, World War II onwards. And it's it's really fascinating. Um, and yeah, definitely helps contextualize the ongoing struggle now. Um, and yeah, I just suggest reading it. I think it's important and um, it's interesting. What can I say? <laughs> okay, um, what am I watching? I am watching quite a few things right now. I won't go into all of them, but I just finished Ted Lasso season two. We watched season one and season two in like a couple weeks. Um, I know I'm behind on the Ted Lasso wave. All my friends were telling me to watch it and I'm like, I don't need another subscription. <laughs> so I was avoiding getting Apple TV for some time. Finally got it. We're binging Ted Lasso now. And I love it. Oh my God, it's so good. It um, manages to be sweet without being like too saccharine, you know? Like it doesn't feel like cloying and in, in, in disingenuous. It feels, um, I don't know. It's just a good story about kindness and taking care of yourself and just being a better person basically. Um, yeah, for those who don't know, Ted Lasso is about an American football coach who goes to the UK to coach football. I'm putting that in quotes. We call it soccer here, <laughs> but proper football. Um, yeah, so it's very much like a fish out of water. He's an oh shuck so golly kind of guy uh, going up against these kind of like rough, rough British boys. It's so good. Um, I highly recommend that. I, we also recently started watching Schmigadoon on Apple TV, which I really like musicals and I've been looking for a musical television series to fill the gap since Crazy Ex-Girlfriend left the air. And let me just say, if you haven't seen Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, you are missing out. That's one of my favorite shows in the past 10 years. It's outstanding. Rachel Bloom is hilarious. The songwriting in that show is on point. And... I'm sad it left the air. Had four incredible seasons. Definitely check them out. But anyway, we're like, okay, Schmigadoon's a musical. Let's see what's going on. It's entertaining. It's got Cecily Strong, Keenan, Keenan Michael Key. Yep, that's who it is. Um, yeah, they play a couple who are like teleported into some sort of musical land and they have to try and find their way out. And they've been having kind of like relationship struggles. So it's just about them. I mean, we've only watched two episodes. They've broken up like already at the end of episode one, basically, or the beginning of episode two, um, because they can't escape until they find true love. So uh, yeah, it's very silly. It's got a great cast. Uh, Alan Cumming is in it, Christine, uh, Kristen Chenoweth. So yeah, it's, if you like musicals and you like really ridiculous things, Schmigadoon is also awesome. Movie-wise, oh wow, I watched Possessor, finally. If you like horror, check out Possessor. It is ex extremely disturbing. I'm still thinking about it weeks later. <laughs> it's about a woman um, played by Andrea Riseborough. She is an assassin, but she, ass she assassinates people by getting like mind melded with someone else. So she takes over someone else's body to carry out an assassination and one of the people she mind melds with ends up overpowering her. So they're kind of like struggling for control in the same body. It's really intense. I would only recommend it if you can stomach body horror in the vein of Cron like David Cronenberg, if you know who that is. Um, this is by his son, Brandon Cronenberg. So yes, the apple did not far fall, fall far from the tree in that one. 
Um, but yeah, I, I absolutely loved Possessor. It was good, it was upsetting in all the right ways. <laughs> Definitely check it out. Um, I watch a lot of movies. I'm not gonna talk about them all, but I am gonna link my uh, Letterboxd in the description. I don't know if anyone uses Letterboxd, but I use it to track what I'm watching, because why not? And finally, what I'm playing. I'm still struggling with Hollow Knight. <laughs> Um, I defeated one area, I'm getting slowly better, but now I'm stuck in an entirely new place, which is really annoying, but I'm gonna get past it. Uh, I just have to focus. <laughs> I'm at this place where it's like, it's really difficult to get to, I need to get there, you bounce from a platform onto somewhere else, and as soon as you land on that place, some little dude kicks you off the edge onto a bunch of spikes. So I haven't figured out how to get past him yet. But I'll do it, eventually. But yeah, Hollow Knight I've been playing and I wanna pick up a game called Dredge. I thought it was only on Steam, so I was kind of avoiding it. Not that I don't play things on Steam, I just, my computer isn't amazing. And I don't like to download like my own personal games to my work laptop, even though I, I think I could probably do it, but I don't know, feels weird. Um, but I saw that it was on the Switch, so I think I'm gonna buy Dredge and check it out. Dredge is a game where you, it's kind of like Lovecraftian, you play a, my understanding is anyway, you play a fisherman who goes out, dredges the bottom of a lake, an ocean, I don't know, and finds creepy secrets. <laughs> Sounds right up my alley. So that is a game I have my eye on, and I hope to play that soon. But yeah, anyway, that is it. Um, thank you again for joining in. This was much longer than I was thinking. I'm going to try and edit it down a bit so it's not quite a full hour for you people. But anyway, um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that and uh, I will see you again in a couple weeks. Bye-bye everybody!